To be honest, guys, this event was actually pretty good. Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace, and today we are going to be talking about the event kind of first impressions, shop priorities, stuff like that, which stages to farm, because there is like a lot of these outstanding questions that we can't really answer since we have no foresight from this game. It turns out it's actually quite simple, but before we get into this, I wanted to talk about some of the hidden changes that actually came into this patch. And a lot of these are actually really, really nice. It makes a little bit of content a little bit easier, and it actually like increases the free to playness. So without further ado let me jump into these hidden features first and then we can go talk about the event all right so the first one is actually in the colossus so if you guys like know about the starlight chamber when you upgrade it it actually says oh we're going to give you star gems and the like soul amber so if i click into the starlight chamber thing i click into facility message you can see here that i completely botched it it's not soul amber it's hearthstone sorry guys but not only do we get hearthstones we're actually supposed to be getting like star gems as well and if you guys don't know what star gems are i'll refresh your memory real quick so star gems are like a type of currency you get from rolling and you can actually spend them in the store here. For those of you who are familiar with Genshin Impact, this is very similar to like when you get dupes. So when you roll or when you get dupes, you actually get a bunch of these guys and these are called the star gems. And so what you can do is you can spend star gems on these guys over here, like five per month for the blue ones and five per month for the star flares. Now what is awesome is that this update has actually made it so that we are getting star gems from that starlight chamber that I just showed you before. In the previous patch, we weren't getting any star gems as well, even though it did say that we were supposed to be in the tooltip. And so that is actually really awesome because it increases like the whole free to playness of all of this. It means that we might not necessarily have to roll that much to be able to like get these guys over here. However, from what I saw, it's actually not that much. So like, we'll see if we can actually clear it all out. All right. So the next like hidden change, and I call these hidden changes because they didn't actually announce it anywhere or like in any patch notes. Maybe they'll put out patch notes and this will be mentioned there. But like, as far as I can tell, I didn't see anything. So the one I wanted to talk about is this one over here, which is the Gronru dungeon. And I call it the Gronru dungeon, but really it's like the equipment dungeon. In this dungeon, essentially you farm for these guys, the sublimes, and you can use it to like increase your character's like equipment level. And so what was really horrible about the stage, so if I click into enemy intel here, we had to fight this robot. And I'm sure you guys have fought this guy before because like I'm pretty sure he appears in Spire. But essentially it is a two-phase fight where you fight like kind of like a main body and then when you finish it, it actually splits into four components like these guys. What happens was that when you kill this guy, you would actually go into phase two, there would be four of these guys and then they would like almost one hit you. Each of these guys would be like hitting you for 25 or 30 percent of your hp and there are four of them and so a lot of the time what actually happened was that they like just chunked you and you almost immediately died so the hidden change that i want to talk about here is that they actually nerfed this this is amazing news because like even like with a full end game team like even i would get chunked like that pretty sure like there was no exception like everyone just got freaking chunked and so hopefully what this means is that this stage will now be like audible and they won't just like completely die for now that's kind of like all of the hidden changes that i found but both of these are extremely significant one of these like lets you actually auto this freaking stage because it was so like freaking bad before and the other one actually gives you a way to hopefully get more pulls per month okay and so with that being said let's hop into the event because this is a pretty cool one all right so we are going into the eye of the storm this is the first event of the game and honestly it's pretty decent so i've cleared all of the stages that we can do so far and i guess like my thoughts on it is that it's quite easy if you guys did watch my like preparation guide i said you guys will probably need up to like a240 i'd say that that's actually quite a good estimate because if i click into this one it's actually oh it actually says a Ascend 3 level 1. However, I really don't think that you need Ascension 3 level 1 for this, like, because I, like, completely curb stomped the boss. I really do think that A240 can do it, but if you're, like, Ascension 3 level 1, you should be able to absolutely smash it. All right, with that being said, let's have a look at these stages. And so the first question is, which one do I farm? Honestly, there isn't really much choice here. So if I actually just click into one of these, you'll see for every stamina, so this costs 30 stamina, we're going to get 300 of these, like, event currencies. And so every single stage maintains this, like, kind of ratio of, like, one stamina stamina gives you like 10 currency. However, what is kind of dictating us to farm at a certain stage is if I go back here and I go into the event quest, the desert bounty over here, what you're going to see is you're going to see this guy over here, which is clear N8 daybreak 20 times. And so I guess here it's blatantly obvious what they want us to do, which is obviously to clear N8 daybreak 20 times. Other than that, they also want us to sink a lot of stamina into this event, and I would probably advise you to do so. But to be honest, like don't do it for these quests because these jaspers, like they really freaking suck. Just think of these guys as a bonus and like you're actually working towards this progress meter on the left hand side over here. Because to be honest, this is where the real prize is because these Jaspers like really suck. So yeah, to sum it up, you can already see they really want us to farm N8 Daybreak 20 times. However, after you have farmed it 20 times, I would suggest actually looking at the stage you want to farm. And the reason I say this is because if we click into it, you're going to notice that the stages actually give different like element ascension materials. I clicked the wrong one. So let me click this one N8 Daybreak. And so this one gives fire and electric. This one is really good 
good for me because I actually main fire team. However, this is probably going to make like your water mains or your forest mains a little bit less happy. And so I would say that you should definitely still finish this one 20 times just to finish that quest. But also if you do finish that, you could like look at the other ones to farm. And so as you can see, N7 gives you the water mats as well as the green mats and all the other drops should be exactly the same. We're looking at 300 nuts, 10 of these jaspers and 7.3k. And if I click into N8, it should be virtually identical. And as you can see, it is completely identical. So yeah, I guess the strategy for this is, is like you want to finish N8 20 times. And if you are a forest or a water main, go over and farm N7. Now, why exactly should you farm this event? So if I go into the highway store, which is the event store, you can see that we've got a whole bunch of awesome stuff. And let's start talking priorities. The thing is looking at that stage before, it looks like a piece of crap to farm. We're only getting like green level ascension mats and a little bit of stuff. However, what you're going to notice here is that we actually are able to get a whole bunch of ascension mats. For just 200 of these nuts, we can actually get four of these T3 Ascension Mat Selectors. This is honestly like so freaking good. And so what that translates to is if you spend 20 stamina, because again, remember it's a one to 10 ratio for stamina to event currency. It means for every 20 stamina, we are getting four of our preferred T3 mat. And you can do this up to 15 times. And so it's kind of for these kinds of reasons that I would really recommend actually farming out those N8s and like potentially N7s if you need to. And just really trying your best to clear out this entire shop because like these guys at least are really freaking good. From a stamina efficiency point of view, it is is more like efficient to do these rather than like to story stages. But the best thing about this is that these are selectors and so you can actually pick what you get. Normally when we're going for A3, you want to be farming like those purple tier ones in which like you're going to be getting a bunch of random T3 mats. And so if we come over here, we see this one. So this is saying like about 60 stamina for two T4 mats. The approximate drop rate of like the T4 mats right now is at about like 25%. And so that makes like this super stamina efficient compared to that. On top of that, this is just guaranteed and you guys cannot forget that we are getting like a bunch of those like T1 and T2 mats like back in the stage itself. All in all from the perspective of like ascension mats I would say this is definitely worth it. To be honest it'd be really freaking weird if they made this like less efficient than story stages. So I guess let's have a little faith okay. All right so we did see that we have a whole bunch of different items in the shop which is pretty exciting. Now let's talk about shop priorities. So what I think that we should go for like first up to last. So my philosophy for these stores is that you want to be getting all of the items that you normally cannot get. That includes things like Dawn, the Dawn Soul, Amber, this volcanic stone, the potted dawn flower, because these are like limited furnitures. And if I move over here a little bit, that's kind of looking like it. Those really are like the only exclusive items that are limited to this event. And although the star crest is just sitting there at 7,000 of those nuts, I still would say like, you know, those are higher priority simply because you can't get it after the event's over, especially furniture. Furniture is so freaking scarce right now. Like, holy moly. Okay. So just to summarize my rambling there, I'm saying top priority, you want dawn, dawn soul ambers, volcanic stone, and potted dawn flower. If you don't really care about Dawn, then I guess you can do your own thing, but I would really recommend it. If nothing else, then at least for like collection's sake, right? Okay, then what about the Star Crest? The reason why it's not top priority is because of two reasons for me. One, it's going to take a long ass time for you to actually complete any of the old seals. And even if you can complete the old seal, you can actually still get Star Crest from the shop. You guys can already see Star Store over here and we got Star Crest two per month because this resets monthly. However, what I do want to say is that this currency, the SS Star Gem is actually really rare. Well, it's really rare for me because because I've been relatively unlucky. And so I wouldn't count on like getting these guys all the time. And so it's for these kinds of reasons that I would rate the Star Crest as like, you know, higher priority than the other things because it is technically still like quite scarce. And so where we're at now is first limited stuff first. So Dawn, Sol Amber, Volcanic Stone, Potted Dawn Flower, and then the Star Crest next. Because if I scroll over and I look at all of this, like honestly, you can farm all of this stuff like relatively easily. Just remember that you can only use this Star Crest on those old Seal Aurorians or like the Silent Hunters as they like to call them. All right, moving on, we have the these guys here. So the T4 mats, the T3 mat selectors, and a whole bunch of this other stuff. What I can tell you now is bottom priority is the Colossus patch three. You guys should be way done with your Colossus. And if you're not, then I guess consider picking them up. But really this should be like done and this should have like absolutely no use for you. I would say the second least most important thing would be between like the Thunder Powder and the Rediesel, which are gifts for your Aurorians. So if I click into it here, you can see that it's a valuable gift for the Rediesel wrench Aurorians. Again, I would say these guys are kind of like farmable for, like through your secret territory. And so they are kind of like down on the priority list. But not only that, it's just that these gifts don't really have like a massive impact on your gameplay. Like they give such minimal stats. It's not even like worth it. All right, moving on. And I would say that the third least most important would be the general Jasper threes and the Jasper two order boxes. I just think that these suck. Like they suck so much, especially when it's like general Jaspers. Like these are all just so like farmable. Also comparing the Jaspers to like the Nitium, for example, this is like four times the cost of the Nitium. And so what we're saying here is that for 16 stamina, we could be getting 40K Nitium. And so therefore for 20 stamina, we could be getting 
50k nitium. That is already like a way better ratio on the nitium than it is in like the normal farming stages. Because the normal farming stages is for an extra 10 stamina, we only get 5k extra nitium. On top of that, typically speaking, we also like slurp up nitium like crazy. It's just used for everything like equipment, ascension, like literally everything. And so I'll place the nitium and the sublime probably at the same level. They are both quite important. The sublime is actually especially interesting. So we actually get like a total of 2k sublime here, which is really nice. And so depending on how you use it, that could result between like two to four equipment levels. I think this is really good, but like, especially with the nerf, it's a little less important now. Okay. So just recapping all of that, I am saying that the Colossus patch is the least important. And then these two gift materials after that, and then these Jaspers after that, and then these two are at about the same rank. Okay. And all we have left to compare is therefore these guys over here and these guys over here. We are comparing T4 mats versus T3 selectors. For me personally, I reckon that the T4 mats are more worth it just because they are actually guaranteed. I don't know about you guys, but like farming those story stages for A3 ascension materials has been such a pain. These T4 mats, and I call them T4, sorry guys, just for context, T4 is the purple ones. So T4 is purple, T3 is blue, T2 is green, and T1 is white. And so these T4 mats, or like these purple mats, they are actually like so hard to farm. Like, oh my god, I've spent so much stamina like just losing the RNG. People say 25% drop rate, I say 10%. It's freaking nuts. But yeah, it's just because like these don't have like a guaranteed certainty that I would say that these are higher priority than these guys over here. For any of the T3 or blue mats, you can actually farm them with 100% certainty. And so I would, yeah. This, this is the way to go. And so therefore, let me give a summary of like the whole priority list from like the most important to the least important. At the top of the priority, we've got Dawn, Dawn Soul Amber, Volcanic Stone, and Potted Dawn Flower. After that, it's the Star Crest, and then the T4 mats. After these mats, it would be the T3 Selector mats, and then we are going over here for the Sublime and the Nitium. After that, I would say it's the Jasper boxes, and then we've got these like two gift materials over here. And then lastly, we should go for the Colossus patch, in which like honestly, you guys should have already done. Now, there is an argument to say like, you know, whilst we can sink stamina into the Jaspers, we can't actually do that into like these like gifts. And that is honestly a really, really valid argument. And so if you do value these gifts because we can only get it through that like secret territory store, then honestly go for it. I really don't think that you can make a mistake between the Thunder Powders and the Rediesels and the Jaspers. To me, to be honest, they're both like equally meh. All right, that is a pretty good shop priority. And so I would really anticipate that all of the shops are gonna look like this. Moving forward, every event is probably gonna have like a welfare unit with its associated soul ambers. A bunch of furnitures, a star crest, and a bunch of ascension mats, and all of this other stuff. It's pretty standard stuff, to be honest. Like, I predicted all of it, I think. The only thing that I didn't really predict was, like, this guy over here, the star crest. But honestly, it is a pleasant surprise. So, like, we take that, boys. I think the last thing to talk about about this highway store is, like, how much do you actually need to farm to be able to get all of these items? I would say just farm it all out, even the Colossus patches, even if you don't need them. There might come a day where we get, like, a level 6 Colossus and we have to actually go upgrade again. And then, therefore, we'll have it all stored up in the bank and it'll be groovy. Otherwise, you could convert these Colossus patches into like your fireflies and then convert those fireflies into like the reagent. But honestly, I'll just leave them sitting in the inventory for one day. But yeah, so how much do we actually need to farm to be able to clear this guy? I did some early calculations and I think we can clear the entire store with just natural stamina in about 12 or 13 days. Otherwise, if that's not enough, I hope you guys took my advice from like one of my previous videos and have saved up those stamina pots. But yeah, I'm relatively sure that we can actually clear most if not all of the shop by the time this event finishes. But even if we can't, like you guys already know the priorities. Really, like everything after like this line is kind of whatever. Everything to the left of here is like really, really good. And everything to the right is kind of like, eh, okay. It's nice. I'll take that. But like, I can live without it, you know? All right. With that being said, there's one more thing I want to talk about. And it's actually these quests over here, which are kind of like, eh, yeah. So as you can see here, we've got these three quests. Obtain Aurorian Dawn, Aurorian Eve, and Aurorian Sensor. Not a massive fan of these quests, like Obtain Aurorian Eve. Like personally, Personally, I don't really care, but like I can see like a lot of players not taking this really the right way. Because what you guys have done, or you guys being tour dog, is that you guys have actually put in a bunch of exclusive quests into a whole bunch of quests that everyone could potentially clear. And so therefore, it's kind of just sitting there and it kind of leaves like a sour taste in your mouth. It's like, bro, I'm broke. I can't even pull either of them. And I completely get that kind of like experience. On the Discord, I've already seen people pull like three E's and no sensor or like vice versa. Some people have dropped like 150 rolls into it and they still can't clear one of these quests. Like that's really frustrating. On top of that, a whole bunch of these other ones are actually associated with like getting Eve and Sinsa. Uh, these ones over here. As you can see, it is Eve reaching Ascension 2 and we've got this guy over here. I know it sucks, but like still. At this point, it kind of just feels like VIP quest without actually saying VIP. And to put that a little bit more eloquently, it's kind of saying
saying like, tell me you have a VIP system without telling me you have a VIP system. And so yeah, I'm not a really a big fan of this. Like Eve reaches breakthrough three. Wow, that even requires an Eve dupe. And so even if you hit Eve, you can't actually like get this if you don't get another copy of Eve. I don't know guys, that's kind of freaking weird. I'm I'm not a fan of that. We've got that for Sinsa as well. And just like locking this limited star flare behind that, it's... Uh, yeah. I know a lot of people are going to be counting like the loom amber or like the amount of star flares we get and kind of use that as expected income. And then what's going to happen is that they're going to see this stuff and they're going to get a little bit salty about it. For me, I'm kind of like easy going. I'm like, yeah, whatever, it's fine. But I guess I'm just speaking this from like a general player base point of view. I think a lot of people are not going to be very happy when they see this and realize what it takes to get it. It's literally flashing like a limited pool next to all of these like crappy ascension materials. And so yeah, if there was any kind of feedback that I could give, I'd probably say like remove these quests or kind of try to deliver it another way where it's not so intrusive to like the free to play experience or not even free to play experience, like from the regular experience. You know what I mean? If you're really insistent on these kinds of quests, I would say try to be like a little bit more sneaky about it. It won't make me feel much better, but it might make a lot of other people feel better if they don't see it. Honestly, that's really terrible advice, but like it's the only thing I can think of. All right, I think that's it for the quest. Like otherwise it's looking all right. We get a nice limited star flare over here and we get this cool truck and so yeah, I think that's pretty cool. All right, so with that being said, I think that's kind of it. I'm not sure there's much more to talk about. I guess my general impressions of all of this is that it's a really nice story. It's got like everything going on for it. Not a big fan of those quests in the Desert Bounty. The highway store is really nice. And I think that the difficulty for the event is probably appropriate, especially for like a launch event. I think most people who have played since launch or even actually only played like a week, they'll be able to finish like the entire event. I may be speaking too soon though, because like we do have this like special event coming up next. And apparently it is the hard stages. So I guess stay tuned guys. Otherwise, like the feel, the music, the OST is awesome. These guys always nail the mood and the atmosphere, like with all the pictures, all the designs, all of the OSTs, all the sounds, and even the story. I really like the story. I'm quite invested now. With that being said though, I wish the background was kind of moving like some level of live 2D. It might make it all feel a little bit more alive because if I go into like the story stage, a lot of it is actually moving and I really miss that. And so as you can see, like these snowing particle effects, you got these birds over here, you got a freaking floating city over here, and you got the secret territory. This map just like feels so freaking alive. And I think that if you could replicate some similar feeling in the eye of the storm or like future events, that would be really, really awesome. But otherwise, I think that's kind of it for this video. I think I've covered a lot of things. And so with all of that being said, let's start wrapping up this video. I've got a secret question for you guys and it's how are you guys enjoying Eye of the Storm? Is it what you guys expected? Like to be honest, it's like everything that I expected and a little bit more thanks to the Starcrest, but like these boxes, I really love this. But aside from that, like the story and all of that, the mood, like I really, really like it. I think this is a great solid event, like out of the gate first event. Nothing innovative, but I really did not expect anything innovative. But that's my thoughts and I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. And so if you guys could drop that opinion down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it means that you've actually watched my video all the way to the end. And so thank you so much for that. Otherwise, if this video has kind of helped you or like was mildly entertaining, then please consider a like, a sub, a comment, a follow, a pin. But as my grandpa once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.